I mean, the answer to that uh, is actually it's both. So behavior is very important because, you know, we are dealing with entrenched uh, centuries old habits of people going out in the open for a number of reasons, and <clears throat> which include the lack of water. So that comes up as well. So water and sanitation usually go together. And that's been one of the challenges we face in uh, how do you ensure that open defecation free is sustained because you need water. In India, uh, people use water. So one of the policy uh, shifts in this direction has been that uh, pipe water supply now has been prioritized for open defecation free villages. This was announced by the finance minister in the budget speech. Now having said that, out of our 200,000 odd villages which are open defecation free, our calculation is about 130,000 villages have pipe water supply. Now these may be only be public stand posts for the moment because uh, household connection coverage of water supply in India is only about 15%. It's a big problem. But we are now moving to revamp the drinking water program as well. So I think water is one factor, but also uh, when you do sanitation, one of the technologies which we encourage in rural areas is the use of something called the rural toilet pan, which is the toilet bowl, which has a steep slope. So it actually requires less water to flush. So you need only a, a liter and a half if you've got a rural pan compared to four or five liters for an urban pan. So in other words, the idea is to go in for technologies which require less water, and, but at the same time, incentivize ODF villages with more pipe water. So we're still working on that, it's work in progress, but uh, we think that converging these two is going to make it much more sustainable. Manual scavenging as a concept is handled by the Ministry of Social Welfare, but of course it's got a direct link with sanitation. So, uh, and we deal with rural sanitation as you know, not with urban sanitation, which is handled by urban development. So the connection for us is uh, the conversion of unsafe toilets to safe toilets, right? So in rural areas, <clears throat> that's what we are focusing on. And so we have been, in fact, in the last month, focusing very much on this. And according to reports from state governments, more than, so there were two parts to it. One part was carrying out a survey. You know, this came out in 2013, 14, as you know well. So a survey was carried out by the states and uh, that survey has been completed in all states except for a few. And in the states where it has not been completed, it's almost 90 to 95% completed. So according to the information from the states, the, in terms of numbers, the conversion of insanitary to sanitary is very few. It's, I think it's in the hundreds in rural areas. Now, granted that there may be more cases in, in rural areas, but I think this is primarily, it's more an urban issue than a rural issue, if you have to compare. And uh, for example, recently, you know, I was talking to the principal secretary of Uttarakhand. So there are some remaining cases, or they were in Haridwar, where uh, in, in, in rural Haridwar. So the focus is still on, we monitor this. And when we work with state governments, one of the top item, uh, agenda items for us in the conversation is the conversion. So if you take Mizoram, for example, now Mizoram is not associated normally with open defecation. In fact, most of them actually don't go out in the open, but in some cases in Mizoram, you have toilets which are classified as insanitary. So converting them is a focus. And so we in rural Swaj Bharat, in Grameen Swaj Bharat, we're focusing on converting unsafe to safe. Wherever there are cases, if there are cases of manual scavenging, which is the physical handling of human excreta, you know, that is reported to the state governments and to us, and we ask them to take immediate action.